Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today, this lovely Friday on Comics from the Future. This is our show we do every single week where we're going to preview some upcoming new series, covers, just some cool things we don't want you to miss before FOC deadline or final order cutoff deadline. So in case you don't know, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Before we get the video rolling, I want you to do us one little favor. Take your mouse. <laughs> it might look something like this, or like, scroll down on your phone and hit the subscribe button if you have not already. We hope you find this information valuable, useful, and that it helps hopefully guide you in some of your comic choices. And let us know in the comments below as you watch what you're most excited about. Maybe something you read this past week. Maybe there's a number two coming out and you're excited to continue it. So just engage with us in the comments and we will talk right back with you. And I think we can get it rolling. All right, so first off, we're going to begin our featured comics section. These are just sort of some of the big ones we think people care the most about. So without further ado, Batman vs. Big B, A Wolf in Gotham, number one of six. I haven't been shy about saying my favorite comic ever is Invincible, but my other favorite comic is Fables, which has, uh, I think the last issue of that came out in maybe... 2015. Yeah, it's, it's been quite, a while a uh, since that ended, but it is coming back starting with this mini series written by Fables creator Bill Willingham and artist Brian Level. And this time, Big B Wolf, who is the big bad wolf from the fairy tales, is in Gotham. And there's been some murders happening where. Uh, at the crime scenes, Batman can't figure it out, but he's finding uh, footprints like paw prints. He's fighting bite marks, uh, tufts of hair. So there is a werewolf in Gotham. Is it Bigby? Because he can change into a giant wolf. We don't know, but it's all, everything's centered around a mysterious book that uh, has been, I believe, stolen or something uh, in libraries and everything. So Fables is very literary based. Um, kind of a reimagining of Grimm's fairy tales. But this is the first time that kind of the main DC universe is crossing over with it. It's something uh, Bill Willingham has always wanted to do is Big B is the detective of Fable Town, Batman, the detective of Gotham, and bringing them together for the first time. And there's a new Fables. They're going to be continuing Fables after this, but this is kind of getting us back in the mindset of that. And it sounds like it's going to be really good for people who haven't read Fables as well. Because you've got Batman, he's that that uh, that lighthouse, that things you're you're constant. You know Batman as he kind of introduces you into the world of fables. Yeah, so. I mean, if if you're gonna join the DC world, you've got to pay your respects to Batman. So that's what fables are doing. <laughs> it's like some mafia thing. You've got to go and pay your you respects kiss to the, the top. Ring. You kiss the ring <laughs> of Batman. The bat symbol. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd see the day where they do a crossover because I also am a big fan of fables. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll just say to anyone out there, if you haven't read it, just read the first trade. It will hook It'll you. hook you, yeah. It, it does not take a long time to, to warm up. Yeah, it's it's uh, but it's but not your uh, kids' fairy tales. No. It is, it is mature and awesome classic Vertigo series. And we've got the main cover here, the Yannick Paquette variant or the A cover, and then the B cover, which is by Brian Level, who is going to be the interior artist on this. What, what are we seeing? Okay, it's all the stuff in the, the, yeah, in the, in the back cave. cave. In the back yeah, cave the penny, with yeah. uh, a werewolf staying on top of the dinosaur. The dinosaur yeah. But that's not Big B, because that's true, when he transforms, he's... he looks like a, a giant wolf. He's kind of like a dire wolf. So. Yeah, he's a darker color. It's fur Yeah, it looks color. like we might have a new werewolf in Gotham. Interesting. It looks like he's going after the bats or the bats <laughs> are going after him. He's going to be swiping at him, growling at him. All right, so the next one from Marvel is The Death of Doctor Strange. This is going to be a five-part... Well, this is a five-issue series, mm -hmm. but it does go into other books. And if you want to read everything, I looked it up. I actually got to read a preview of this just today. And at the end, it gave us a nice little chart. There's actually 11 different ones that um, total, with the five in this and then the crossovers, if you want to read everything. So Marvel has already announced, even with this title, <laughs> they're killing Doctor Strange. This is supposed to be his, his actual death. Um, of course, how long is that going to last? Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, Death Wolverine, 
I have to say, I was surprised how long they left Wolverine dead. Yeah. Um, you know, they brought Old Man Logan in and all. So what this asks is not just who killed Doctor Strange, because Doctor Strange does get killed, mm -hmm. but also who's going to fill in for him. He's the Sorcerer Supreme. That is a very important position. In fact, in reading this preview, a lot of this has to do with following Doctor Strange and seeing all the stuff he was responsible for that all the other magicians of the world, they appreciate him for it, but it's not their responsibility. Yeah. Um, by the end of the first issue, you will see his death. That's all I will say for now. Um, I thought it was a strong first issue. I'm really interested to see where it goes. It is clearly a murder mystery. You're not going to know the murderer by the end of the first issue. There have been certain articles I've seen where people have been saying, oh, it's spoiled because there's a cover where somebody's acting like they did it. I'll just say I read the first issue. It is not uh, spoiled in any way if you've read any of that stuff. I, there's no way anyone can know yet who has done it other than the writers at Marvel, I guess. Um, where so, have we seen Doctor Strange recently? Because his series ended. He's been in Miss, uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah, that's he, he right. Was, yeah, trying to help her out with all her magic problems and all her magic issues. So um, so this is the main cover. Next, we have the Bustos cover. This is another of those Stormbreaker covers mm -hmm. they're having the up-and-coming artists do. Yeah. You can go wild at Doctor Strange covers. I, you can't get too weird. Yeah, it's funny. In this issue, um, Bats the Dog... Um, and Wong, they reference how Doctor Strange used to talk because he used to talk a lot more bombastic. Yeah, and they have a funny explanation for that. <laughs> so um, they die, they di they dissect Doctor Strange a little bit in this. Um, I don't mean that in a morbid way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the death. They don't ne bisect. They dissect. <laughs> Next up, this is the uh, Miles Morales tenth anniversary, and you can see him above the Doctor there doing a little chant. And then we got, of course, Peach Momoko. I really like what she's doing with the uh, with the space the, the cloak. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And th this is my favorite though, the Scotty Young. Now, <laughs> you guys may not have time to read this, but these are other characters who have died before in other books, and they're they're kind of consoling him. They're going, yeah. "We know what it's like. Don't worry, <laughs> you won't be dead forever." That's great. So, <laughs> anytime someone gets upset, oh, they killed this character, just hold up this cover and be like. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we, we all know. Cute. Yeah, the the writers know that that's just sort of a thing. <laughs> We're along the for characters. the ride. It's fun. Exactly. All right. Next up, another one from DC is Batman Secret Files Miracle Molly. They're continuing these Secret Files, which are one shots that are focusing more on some of these breakout characters that DC has had in the Batman series with Clown Hunter. Now with Miracle Molly, so she made her debut around Batman one hundred eight, and she's just kind of been. Uh, more of a sideline character, but she, along with Ghostmaker, are supposed to have some really pivotal parts in Fear State. So I think with this one shot, giving more of a backstory, we'll hopefully see some threads of that coming out with the Fear State stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, she's a really cool character, very interesting. Um, you know, in the beginning we were wondering if she was a villain, but... I don't know. I got down like a rabbit hole of reading about transhumanism, which is honestly <laughs> a really cool concept. Um, just trying to get outside of the boundaries of our human bodies and kind of evolve, be a post-human. So it's a really interesting. I've never seen any comic character explore that sort of territory. So uh, this is going to be a one-shot coming out. I would not miss it if you like Miracle Molly, Batman. It's written by James Tynion. Um, in case any of you are curious, it will still be written by with, him. With her style, it'd be easy to see her in a crowd, that's for sure. <laughs> like, everything <laughs> yeah. about her is loud. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is our A cover, and then we are going to have the Justine Franny B cover. That's the, super cool. The, those leopard tights. <laughs> <laughs> she's an interesting character, too. Like, she's, she's not a villain. She's not a hero. She's mm -hmm. like an anti-hero in the Batman group of anti-heroes she's an anti-anti-hero yeah she's got very unique ideas so mm -hmm. this will be a cool one yep next up you can tell i planned the way we were doing the orders of these <laughs> because i get to talk about all my favorite things next is aquaman the becoming uh so this is a new six-part mini series we the main run on aquaman ended uh, a year or so ago and this is kind of our first Aquaman title to come back after that. We are going to be getting a Black Manta series as well, or mini-series. And I feel like they, these are going to kind of run parallel. 
But this one is by Brandon Thomas, who uh, has been doing some awesome stuff at DC recently. And this explores Jackson Hyde, who was the Aquaman that came about because of Brightest Day, you know, many years ago now, but hasn't really got a big spotlight. He was big in the Young Justice TV show, but in comics he hasn't, we haven't really just focused on him, and this is going to be a really interesting mini-series about um, kind of a coming-of-age thing where something happens where a portion of the palace in Atlantis gets blown up and he is blamed for it. Now he's going to have to prove his innocence all the while kind of showing how he is going to be taking up the mantle of Aquaman. We know in Future State, the Future State Aquaman book, he was Aquaman in that right. training um, Arthur and Mara's daughter. So this uh, feels like it's still kind of in line with the predictions of future state. Yeah. And he's also having to deal with his dad is Black Manta. And what does that mean for him? How is he going to be a hero when he's got that kind of looming over him? And it's not like one of those, my dad was a supervillain. No, he's still currently active out there causing mischief. <laughs> so I think this sounds really cool. I think this is a really cool character that I'm glad they're exploring more. And this is our A cover. And then we have this really awesome Kari Randolph variant cover where you can see he can like make knives out of water. All right, next up we have Amazing Spider-Man number 74. So what makes this such a special issue? It is Nick Spencer's last issue on the series. He has been writing Amazing Spider-Man, building for this moment for three years. Um, three years ago, we started the Kindred story, mm -hmm. and now we're going to see an end to that. And so this is an extra big issue. Um, I, I believe this is quadruple size. Ooh. So I think it's a nine ninety nine issue. There's a lot of covers. So this is a lot of what the show is about. You know, I don't think most people out there want to buy every single cover. So we're going to show them all to you, and you can order which one. Because us retailers, we're not going to order 50 of every cover. Mm -hmm. There's too many of them, and at that price point, that's just too much, uh, too much burden to bear. So instead, we'll do this little show. You tell us what you want, and we'll all be happy. But uh, how great is the Patrick Gleason A cover? It's really good. I, it, it I mean, that, is, that seems to be like a 1 in 100 variant or something like it, it because you know really everyone good. would be wanting this one. It's so pretty. Yeah, so uh, this is actually legacy numbering. This is issue 875. Oh, wow. Yeah, so even though it is number 74 of this series. <laughs> so there's, there's that, that kind of issue that a deal that. about that, too. So the issue after this, it's been widely reported that Ben Riley is taking over mm -hmm. as Spider-Man. So what's going to happen with Peter Parker? What's going to happen with Kindred? I think this is the issue to mm -hmm. grab to find all that out. Um, it's a pretty big deal. This is the Gleason A cover, as we pointed out. Here is the Chichetto cover. And there's a lot of good ones. It's really good. I know. <laughs> that one messes with your head. Like, yeah. He's just, uh, yeah. It seems like, it almost feels like you could do a thing with that like you did with the Gleason web heads where you do a bunch of different characters like this. I could see that yes. too. Uh, the next one is the Ferriera variant. Spider-Man likes to be uh, saving Mary Jane. <laughs> then here is the Friends variant. It looks Kindred. like they're going to be showing down with Kindred. Mm -hmm. Here is the Gomez variant. Then we have the Maliv variant. I think this is another really, yeah. really strong cover. Could have could have been a, a great just A cover on its own or, or incentive. Here is the Momoko. Of course. Always nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Pacelli. This is the Miles Morales 10th anniversary. I was looking at this one when it was there. It's a weird question. Is Spider-Man's butt sticky as well? Because <laughs> I feel like, yeah, you can have your feet like that, but you would also be like horribly leaning off of it. So this could be confirmation that Spider-Man does have a spider butt. School core strength as well to be able to do that. I mean, he can lift a, a van, so I think his, yeah. his core strength isn't the issue. But. <laughs> and then we have the Vincentini variant. I like that a lot of them are Spider-Man and Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. It seems yeah. like that's one of my big predictions of this, is that's actually how it's going to end, is they 
kind of retire off together and Ben Riley comes in. Well, I don't know for we'll sure, but... I also predict I don't think they're going to kill off Peter or anything. No. I, I, think I think that's too it's, easy. It's going to be a handing off of the mantle. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just a prediction. And lastly, we have the U variant. Good action. A lot, a lot of action yeah. on that one. Okay. Okay, this seems really cool. This is called Frontiersman. It's a new image series, new ongoing, and it's written by Patrick Clend Kinden, and Marco Ferrari is doing the artwork. He's also the cover on this. So this is described as like, a, their elevator pitch for this was, it's a classic Green Arrow story adventure with the thoughtfulness of concrete. And one thing I thought was really cool that they said was, it's a superhero story for uncynical readers. Hmm. Um, so a superhero adventure, it's mature, so, you know, but uncynical. So a lot of times when you hear mature, it's like, you maybe think a lot Sin of City, sex and the violence, boys. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah, or just like overly crass, we're cussing on every other panel because just because we can, which, you know, that, that fits here and there, but, uh, I read the first few pages of this and yeah, it's, it's definitely serious and mature, but I, I like, I just, I don't know. I thought that mature was storytelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, if you want a thoughtful superhero tale, this would be good for you. So don't know a ton about this yet, but it seems like the Frontiersman, he is an older protector of nature. So he is in retirement, but he's coaxed out of it. And he, in becoming a spokesman, uh, gets some new and old enemies coming after him. So it's kind of a, it was really well written the first few pages that I saw. So it's going to be pretty interesting. It's got a very striking look too yeah very iconic so we have the poster for this hanging mm -hmm. over on the comic side and one thing i noticed there was like technological stuff yes. in yeah. in the background and i couldn't tell if it was like it used to be futuristic and then the world lost it and it's grown over or what that's a really but... you, you derived a lot just from that poster but yeah, <laughs> yeah i would say so at least in the first few pages it's you know the story's not all there yet but um there were definitely like robots in the midst, okay. and I can't, I can't tell if like society had like degraded, and we're not no longer using that. But it's definitely like uh, critical of human beings and our wastefulness and all that. So it's a little Horizon Zero Dawn that like yeah, rain, right. but yes, post robots. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, and we also have another cover for this. This is the Scalera B cover. Next up. Of course, because I chose some of the order of this. You it's did. Star Wars <laughs> Adventures Ghosts of Vader's Castle. Now, these uh, Vader's Castle series, um, they're doing about once a year around Halloween, and they are spooky Star Wars stories that are a lot of fun. Um, pretty lighthearted because it is the Star Wars Adventures line, but, but very creative in the ways they do it. So, this first issue. It's going to be a five-issue miniseries. It's going to go um, through October. Is the way the way it's structured is there's a, a team of people on Mustafar where Vader's castle is, and they're telling stories. So the first story they tell is about Anakin, Padme, and Jar Jar going up against zombie droids. I was going to say that has to be a Dawn of the Dead reference. Yeah, that's that's incredible. So it's zombie droids for the first ones. Dawn of the Droids, as gotta, it says, I read those. Uh, which sounds really fun. They also talk about in uh, future issues, there's going to be ghosts, monsters, uh, Jackson, the Green Rabbit character, classic Star Wars character from the Marvel comics, right. is going to make his return. And they tease the uh, Vader returns from the grave. So I can't wait to see that. And I like it, too, because this is a group of characters kind of exploring Vader's castle, which is essentially a haunted house in the Star Wars universe. And so the stories they tell are just that. They're stories. They're stuff they've heard. So they don't necessarily have to be true. They can go all over the place. They can make Vader come back as a, a zombie warlord and it not mess with anything. So really fun series, and I'm glad that they're keeping up this uh this yearly um, special. Yeah, IDW has been doing a lot of really awesome stuff with their S Star Wars licensing. Mm -hmm. Like how how they ever got Disney Marvel to allow them to do this, I, I don't know, but they're they're doing some awesome stuff. Yeah. So this is our uh, A cover, which is the Frank Avia cover, and then we have the B cover, which is uh, by Charm. 
Yeah, whatever store you shop with, definitely ask for this because us retailers, we don't order tons of the Star Wars adventures compared mm. to the normal Star Wars yeah. stuff. Um, it's just not as red, even though it should be. Yeah, it's not if like grouped in with that. Yeah. It's not like, oh, if you get Star Wars, you get Star Wars Adventures. Um, we have certain people that definitely ask for it. A lot of people on pull for it, but um, not too many that we get for the shelf. Yep. We'll get a little bit more of this because the holiday and everything, but make sure you ask for it so you can get it. All right, so this one has an interesting premise. It is called Gun Honey. So this is more of a crime-based comic. So the premise is... A gun is smuggled into a high security prison and it is used and kills dozens of people during the escape of this really brutal criminal. So this guy has escaped and the US government goes to presumably this girl on the cover who is the person who smuggled the gun in. She is a gun smuggler. Mm -hmm. That's her job. Her name is Joanna Tan. And they say, hey, because you smuggled that gun in and that guy got away, you got to go catch him. <laughs> so that's the setup for this sort of crime series that's beginning. Uh, this is just a four issue series from Titan Comics. They, they've been doing sort of like the Minky Woodcock stuff. and Hard boiled crime. Yeah, yeah. Their thing. The other thing I'll say, we can't show it on the show um, because it is not safe for work, <laughs> but there is an Adam Hughes cover on this one mm -hmm. that is really good and it, they snuck it in. It's called an FOC variant, meaning we put it in at the last minute to see who would notice it. So sorry we're not showing it on the show, but I'm telling you about it right now. If you want the Adam Hughes variant, you at least with us, you have until Sunday night to order it, mm -hmm. to, to guarantee to get it. That's what the show's all about. So ask your store about that. All right. You may recognize this from Free Comic Book Day, but this is actually what you got on Free Comic Day <laughs> was a preview of the new Suicide Squad King Shark miniseries. This is going to be six issues. And it's really, it just sounds like a really fun premise. I mean, King Shark is just stupid and big and hilarious <laughs> and really powerful as well. So he is on leave from the Suicide Squad and he gets swept up into a mystical tournament where he has to battle totemic spirits. No, totemic animal spirits. Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> like totem. I've never heard, yeah, like that used in a sentence before, <laughs> but here we go. Uh, so this, he must battle Queen Tiger, King Roach. A man king and a ton of other uh, mystical spirits. So anyway, to attain his destiny and make his father proud. So it's got. Did, did you say one of those is like a roach? King roach. Okay. Uh, I want to see more of that character. You will. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, it sounds really fun. Giant beasts and animals and just a really good action. Hopefully it's, it sounds like it's got some heart in there as well. So King Shark, Suicide Squad King Shark number one. And then we have a B cover by Frederici. Which is horrifying. Yeah, Very scary. That, yeah. Yeah. They're reminding you he is as much shark as he is king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he wears pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next is an interesting one because I've seen this around, but I didn't know what does this relate to. So this is X-Men Onslaught Revelation. This is a one shot, which I had to do some searching to figure out that. Um, I've seen people be like, Onslaught's coming back? Yeah, this must have to do with Way of X. It, this is. This is actually the end of Way of X. Okay. So the series is ending, and uh, the way the writer described it is, Cy Spurrier, the writer, said, um, think of Way of X as season one, and then Onslaught Revelation as the big season finale. Now, season two, you'll have to wait and find out where it's going to be. Mm. So... Maybe not necessarily a continuation, like a, a Way of X 2 or whatever, but the story with these characters is continuing. The, of course, the team headed up by Nightcrawler. So in this, which I thought was really funny, there's rumors of a thing called a uh, Crucible. Like Crucible, but hyphenated with ball at the end, which is another dance. It's like you go from <laughs> Hellfire Gala to the, the Crucible. Crucible. And this is the party to end all parties. Literally, this party brings about the end of all things. And in the preview pages, kind of just looks like a rave. But we'll have to wait and see. And Nightcrawler and the whole Way of X team have to stop it, of course. And 
What does Onslaught have to do with it? You'll have to wait and find out, but this is going to be kind of an oversized one-shot. It sounds really fun and interesting that they're bringing back that classic character considering who he actually is. Yeah, he's been in the shadows the whole time of Way of X, and he, he's been influencing even things in other books. Other yeah, it sounds like this is going to be um, kind of a key part in the whole X-Men story, the Krakoa story. Oh, cool. So next up... Oh, is actually, the, variant the variant for it. This is the Vincentini variant. Right. So now we're at the part of the show where we're going to show you cool covers and other comics. So by other comics, we mean issues number two and three. Series that are far enough along, it's time to sign up on them if you want to, because stores start ordering less. So let's begin. The first one is, this is Batman number 113. This is the Molina variant. Buff. Yeah. It's a buff <laughs> boy right there. Uh, of course, this is part of Fear State, which so far I've been enjoying. I, I think Scarecrow is an awesome villain. They've made him scarier than ever. The, the best part of Fear State is when they can do all these interludes of going into people's minds to show what they're really scared of. And mm -hmm. that's a good way to get to know characters. And with Tanya having given us so many new ones, it's like, let's see what their yeah. nightmares are like. So, very, very revealing. It's funny. So, in art, what is it? A character drawing a human figure is like seven to eight heads high or something like that. This Batman's like 32. <laughs> he, could, he could fit like six of his own heads from shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> All right, next up is Catwoman at number 35. As Jason said, this is also a Fear State tie-in. This is uh, Jenny Frizen, oh, yeah. variant cover, of course. So really gorgeous as always, making a lot of use of that dark color. She's glow. She does. She has that glow to her. Yeah. Or Catwoman 35. Playing with yarn. <laughs> Next is Flash 774, the Corona variant. And this issue sounds really fun. Uh, I love, especially that first run of Flash from this uh, recent relaunch or whatever. Um, it's been just fun. Fun yeah. stories, goofy things sometimes. And this one is a uh, daddy-daughter dance that Wally is taking his daughter to when a new character shows up, Dr. Nightmare, says he premieres in this issue, and he is bringing uh, bad dreams are coming to life on the streets, which sounds awfully familiar to Fear State, mm. but we'll have to see. This could just be a one-off story or um, a whole new thing, but once again, I love these, like, little slice of life and then it gets interrupted by superhero, by superhero and and stuff that, that that is a good way to describe it because that's exactly what's been happening yeah. in all the issues he's trying to work a normal job but yeah you know, that's not going to happen great stuff to do with flash. flash yeah so this is the riley rossimo variant for legends of the dark knight number five in this issue several things happen in these but i guess the main story that i was reading about it has to do with calendar man He's back, but this time he's obsessed with a Martian calendar. <laughs> and this Martian calendar is is all about, like, this Martian death god. So he starts committing all these you know, terrible crimes. So there's your variant cover you might be interested in for that. Okay, you guys may not have known this, but Looney Tunes has an ongoing comic, and they're on issue 262. So that's what it says, Looney Tunes 262. Whether you have kids, nieces, nephews, you want to get into comics, or you just want to read something lighthearted, it's a good series to get into. This issue, they sh mostly are all one-shots, but this one is um, about print and comics and magazines going out of style and fashion, and we have to have someone here to save that from happening. So Super daffy. Yeah. Super daffy. Next up is Nightwing 84. This is the uh, Jamal Campbell variant. This is also a tie-in to Fear State. And in this one, Nightwing is now going after the anti-Oracle because she's feeding misinformation into their headsets and leading them the wrong directions and everything. So they can't rely on that, and he's going to go stop it. So this is the Middleton variant for Wonder Woman Black and White number four. Uh, so the, the, the official site that has all of our covers, some of the covers they put up this time were um, not quite the right quality. I think they're still hiring things yeah. out. Yeah, so you'll see some of the DC are going to be like this. That's why it's a little bit smaller. But we still wanted to show the cover. We don't want anyone missing out on a Joshua Milton cover mm -hmm. just because they didn't put the right one up. Um, 
or the right sizing of mm -hmm. resolution. So here it is, Wonder Woman black, white, and gold, number four, Middleton variant. All right. So here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the final issue of Strange Adventures. Strange Adventures number 12, the maxi series, is coming to an end, of course, written by Tom King. This is the cover B. Then we have the recent series that just started, Killer Queens, um, just came out, number one came out uh, last week, week before that, so pretty recently. Um, this is issue number two, where the Killer Queens are stuck in a high security detention center and are going to make a breakout with the help of one of the inmates in there. So this is the Balboni cover, and then we have the Ables cover. He does not look amused. Like, no, he's... he's <laughs> looks like he's been insulted. <laughs> yeah. So, check this cover out. This is for North Mythology number two, number issue four. So, they, they did the first series in North yep. Mythology. This is the second series. This is issue number four. I think this cover is really awesome. It's David <laughs> Mack variant. And, uh, you know, Neil Gaiman, he's just using this as a chance to tell any mythological things he wants to. So, funny enough, this has Thor and Loki in it. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's not Marvel Store and Loki, yeah. and it's the tale where they're in the Giant's Kingdom and they're put through these comical and bizarre trials. So sounds like a great issue and definitely an awesome David Mack cover there. And that's that's a cat represented by like what they think of themselves. They're like, I can push you down. I am in control. Yeah. All right. Next up, this should be turned around when it's in your hands. But this is Echo Lands number two. Echo Lands number one came out this week, and if you guys remember, or if you picked it up, you'll know that it's landscape format, so you don't read it up and down, you read it like this. <laughs> you turn the pages, <laughs> you would do that anyway. Anyway, uh, it's really cool format, and it definitely like uses it to that advantage. One of the most unique things that I think any of us has read lately, um, it's a lot of fantasy. If you're a fan of Sandman, I think you'd enjoy it, but it's got some mixed media in there, and a really intriguing story, very, like I said, fantasy uh, heavy, so loved it. Can't say enough good about it. Of course, it's by J.H. Williams the third. so if you liked number one, go ahead and add it to your list. Get number two, prepare to get it, because it is coming, and this is the A cover for issue number two, and then we have the Samson B cover, but also with this for each issue, they are going to put out these raw cut versions. That's what they're mm -hmm. calling them, raw cut. So this is the raw cut for number one. And basically, it's going to be what the artwork looked like leaving J.H. Williams, the third studio. So I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> like, are we just seeing sketches? I mean, it's definitely going to look interesting either way because I told you there was mixed media in this. Mm -hmm, so yeah. we're at least seeing a different level before it got finalized. Before it probably got cleaned up a little bit. And mm -hmm, at all just sorts of different elements added in. So they also, they're going to keep the text in translucent form. So cool. you, should, you will still be able to read it. It won't just be artwork. Um, but yeah, they're going to do this for each issue. Yeah, th this had fantastic art. I mean, mm -hmm. so we hand sold this. We Andy read it and he's like, check this out. And then we were like, oh my goodness. We just had it at the counter and we just showed people. Yeah, yeah we're like, look how like, this Give opens. Me. Give look me. at the art in this. And they're like, I'll take it. <laughs> yes. so. Yeah, based on our sales, hear me now. It will have a second printing of yeah. issue number one. <laughs> we made it happen. <laughs> And then we also have the B cover. This is the raw cut for the variant. So you can choose. If you want the raw cut, you can have the A cover or the B cover for it. Interesting. Next up, another one that just hit and such a big deal. I mean, the printing of it was astronomical. This is King Spawn issue two. So I have tried so hard to figure out like what is the big story behind this even after issue one uh we know that there is some stuff in the works or some stuff that's been happening that spawn is investigating some horrific accidents or not really accidents that someone caused them and he thinks it's related to one of his enemies we found out at the end of the main spawn story in it who may be behind a lot of this and it is the classic Spawn villain, Billy Kincaid, now just calling himself Kincaid, one of the most horrendous villains in all of comic history. You might remember him as uh, the original Ice Cream Man uh, in Spawn. But uh, this one, it seems like we're going to start finding out why did Kincaid 
call Spawn King Spawn? Why, why does he need Spawn? So, sounds really good. Issue 1 was great. I'm really excited for the series. And this is only $2.99. So we did have a $5.99 issue 1 that was oversized. But it's going back down to $2.99 like the main Spawn series. So, very cost uh, effective series. If you want to collect all the Spawn, you're getting basically a dollar two dollars off what would be a normal comic. So this is the uh, Aguio cover, and then cut him some slack. Uh, <laughs> the B man. cover is by McFarlane. It is not ready yet. Um, he, he's he, he's busy overseeing the Spawn universe. And holding back the tide of inflation single-handedly <laughs> by keeping his comics so affordable yep, and yep. quality. And then this one is really nice. This is the Fernandez variant. Very interesting uh, look for Spawn there. All right. So anybody who has been enjoying Mirko and Dolfo's Paprika, this is issue number three. It is time to tell your store that you want to sign up for this. Because that's around when our stores start ordering less and less. We figure people have decided if they want to keep reading the series or not. So here is your chance. This is just the A cover. There are other covers to choose from, but we're just going to show you this one. So Sweet Paprika by Mirka Andolfo, yep. issue three. All right, this is Second Chances, number two. And just as the title tells you, this series is about uh, one individual, actually, who has the power to grant you basically a second chance at life if you are worthy. There's some supernatural stuff going on in this. Um, it is a black and white series. And the main things I wanted to tell you guys about this is that if you're a fan of some Top Cow stuff, or if you're a fan of Witchblade, The Darkness, you might be interested in this. It may have flown under your radar. Um, issue number one, it's still on the shelves at our store, so you might be able to find it if you missed out on this. Um, but number two is here and coming out. Next is St. Mercy, number two of four. And speaking of Top Cow books, this is the new Top Cow book that is like the Incan Empire versus um, the American Old West. So, once again, tell your store you want to subscribe to it. Another one that is at that point of waiting for people to subscribe is Siphon Number 3. This is the comic where the character has the powers to take away people's pain, but he has to feel it himself. It's pretty terrible power, <laughs> I... I'm surprised he uses it yeah. <laughs> real often. Uh, I, I, maybe very masochistic or, or something. <laughs> so this is the A cover, and then there is also a B cover to order. It is not available for us to show you today. Just wanted you to know about that. Okay, so Fantastic Four number 36. Wanted to show you this cover. This is a wraparound. It's called <laughs> the Wraparound Flame variant. It's for Dark Flame. So this is Fantastic Four number 36. Which, you know, this makes sense because Johnny Storm can't turn off his fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a preview of this issue, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that he is on fire nonstop. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not just a little, like, he's way on fire. It's a so, real problem. So, yeah, I guess this is technically a blank cover. Uh, you could maybe do something with this, but it is a wraparound, which is what some of you maybe can't see here. Mm -hmm. You just draw a smiley face, and it's him looking through the flames. <laughs> yes. All right, so this is going to lead us into uh, more Miles Morales 10th anniversary issues, starting with Fantastic Four at number 36 this week. Um, so this is the Miles Morales variant. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy number 18, Miles 10th. He, Miles is getting around this week. He's all over the place. <laughs> and like every one of these, he has kind of a slightly different costume. Yeah, I see that. Maybe, you know, because he was getting his new costume, maybe they told mm -hmm. all the artists, you know, you do your own costume. Yeah. Since he's about to get one, you know, just have fun with that. Then we have Moon Knight number three, the Miles 10th anniversary variant. I like that one. That's very cool. Which leads us into the regular Moon Knight number three. So, very big one. The series could not be more popular around here. At least everyone is loving it. Everyone is curious about what's going on. Yes, the new guy claiming to be a Moon Knight is back. That's him on the cover. Mm -hmm. He's a full moon. And <laughs> the crescent moon. We actually did get no. a preview of this, and let's see, what can I tell you without being spoilery? Um, yeah, like I said, there is, you can see the new guy, and it is, he and Mark Spector have a huge fight. So this is a very action-packed issue. You will not want to miss it. You will sign up for this, so you do not miss your chance of getting this on the rack. Yeah, like, issue one, incredible. Issue two, really good. Issue three, 
incredible. <laughs> that That's what I'll say. When I finished reading this one, I was like, this was so cool. So. Next up is a couple of Star Wars variants. This is for Bounty Hunter number 16. The main, not the War of the Bounty Hunter, just Bounty Hunter. Um, and this is the 50th anniversary uh, Lucasfilm cover by Sprouse that you can tell is, uh, looks like episode three to have Grievous on the cover. Then we have the Blueprints variant by uh, Villanelli, and this is Valence's ship, The Broken Wing. I, I think they um, had this on, they must have re FOC'd this, because I think we already showed this last week. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. I'm not sure. They may have. I just remember which... seeing Valence in a ship yeah. on the cover. So sometimes they'll push a, a comic back and it'll end up on the show again. Mm -hmm. So if you've already asked us for this, no need to ask again. We, we already log all those numbers. Yep. But another chance to get it. Okay, so next up is the United States of Captain America number four. So this issue sounds really cool. This is in the solicitation, so I'm not giving this away by telling you. But um, John Walker, U.S. agent, and Bucky Barnes, Winter Soldier, join Cap and Falcon. So it's all four of them wow. together in this issue. So, I mean, I've already been quite enjoying it. But now that all four of them are going to be together, it's going to be really cool. Um, also, they meet Ariella Agbayani who is the campus Captain America. You can see her right there. So she's the Captain America of her college campus. Uh, when things are getting you know, out of hand or you know, people are getting too rowdy, she does something about it. So she's the fourth new Cap that they're sort of meeting along their journey. And here is the design cover for that very issue. It's the, uh, the artist's Nishi, Nishijima design cover. All right, this is X-Corp number five. I believe this is the last issue of this miniseries. Uh, this is the all-red variant. We didn't want you guys to miss that. They've, the A covers of this have all looked like variants. Yeah. Um, and all looked really interesting. And this is no different, but this is the all-red variant. So as this is the last issue, it will be a cutthroat battle as they send their most cutthroat team against the X-Corp. Next up is X-Men number three. I've really enjoyed this X-Men run so far. Um, and I'm really excited about this one because this is the return of the High Evolutionary. And of course, he, he's all into um, the genes of things and how things work and grow and change. And now he's, he's interested in mutants. So he's coming back for this. And this is our A cover. Then we have the Dodderman. Uh, like trading card variant so I mean, with Marvel Girl. I, I have that somewhere. <laughs> I do have that somewhere. And then this one is uh, for X-Men Legends, the Legend series that kind of explores older X-Men storylines, brings back some of the original creators. And this one, very exciting, is by Larry Hama. And he is going back to do a tale of Wolverine and Jubilee. So characters that he did a lot with back in the day. I think this is going to be really cool. We don't see those two together as much anymore. No. And especially like in this classic setting where she was a lot younger. Yeah. And he was kind of a mentor father figure to her. So yeah. And this is the Torque variant. She's going to the mall. Mm -hmm. And he'll show up to save her. He's, he's blowing bubbles. Bubble gum. And he pops it with his claws. <laughs> okay. Great. So next up. Here is the cover for Dark Blood number three. This is about a soldier who has uh, very strange powers. He has trouble controlling, but at the same time, he's trying to hold back all the memories he went through in war. Uh, so this is the regular cover for issue number three. Here is the variant. That the, was cool. Yeah. It's sort of a, a EC horror mm -hmm. yeah. homage. And they're also releasing... A second print of issue number two that sold out on the distributor level and so they're reprinting it all right next up is eat the rich number two from boom just finished reading the number one not too long ago it was excellent it's got it's really well told um, what's it about uh, this girl she's very out of place in a society her boyfriend is uh, much more well-to-do than she is and she goes to meet his family, his friends, and 
they are some misbehaving rich people. <laughs> um, they're doing some really sinister things, and she, as anybody should be, was not okay with what she saw go on in the first issue, so she's probably, based on the solicitation, going to take it upon herself to do a little bit more investigation and maybe bring some of this stuff to light. So it was really, really well done. Issue number one, easy to put yourself in this character's shoes and live through her, so... Looking forward to issue number two, and this is our A cover, and then the Carrie B cover. Very disturbing. Maybe some of these uh, B covers will, you know, start to make a little more sense as the story unfolds. So I can't read that from here, but It's just they... pointing out, like, brain, cheek. Different cuts of meat. <sighs> yeah, okay. All right, Jason, so... Jason, you always read more in two, but I think you're right. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. All right, so now we're on the section of the show for other printings. So here are comics that they are reprinting. Let's begin. Lots of reprints this week. So first off is Batman Urban Legends number six. This is the second printing. It's a very big issue. Everybody talking about it. So of course, they would send it back to get another printing. This time just doing a black and white cover, which is very, mm -hmm. very unlike them, but very nice. I guess the interiors are black and white, correct? I don't think so. No. Okay, no. I'm thinking of You're Gotham. You're thinking of Gotham, uh, yeah. Yeah, Future State Gotham. Uh, okay, so this is the fourth printing for TMNT Last Ronin number one. So even this far in, and it's been out for this long, mm -hmm. we are still running out of copies mm -hmm. as people hear about yes. this. People who haven't read the comic in a long time hear the premise, and they come in, and they're looking for that number one. Mm -hmm. So here's the fourth printing of that, and then this is the third printing of Last Ronin number two. And I do believe that's some new art. I don't think I've seen that cover. Uh. It's definitely recolored. Recolored, at least. Yeah. I think that's what did it, the recoloring. Yeah, it looks good, that one. All right, next up, Noctera number six is getting a second print. This series has seen a lot of interest lately as people, once again, are hearing about it in the news. There is a pretty well-confirmed source that somebody's talking about this. I'm sure we'll hear some news on it being optioned really soon. So, Noctera number six, second printing. Same cover as the uh, original, actually, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next up is Ordinary Gods. Uh, this is the new Kyle Higgins book, now that Kyle Higgins is doing quite a bit over at Image. And this is Ordinary Gods number one second printing. And we also have uh, number two second printing, so you can get all caught up with Ordinary Gods. Another big indie book is Radiant Black. So number seven was the beginning of the new story arc. And it has sold out on the distributor level. So here is a second print of issue number seven that you can get. Um, the yeah. other printings of this have been so good. They yeah. do all new art for the other printings. and Really yeah. nice. All right, this is Avengers number 47, second printing. So what happened in this issue to make it so important? It was when She-Hulk becomes Winter Hulk. And it's the debut of new Iron Man armor. So it's going back for a second printing for Avengers 47. Then we have the second print of Daredevil. I said Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil 33. Uh, this is, I mean, it's funny that this run of Daredevil has been going on for 33 issues. And people are like, oh, now i got to really get into it. Because we have Elektra, now it's Daredevil. And Bullseye doing crazy stuff, and I think that's why this went to a second printing. Mm -hmm. So many second prints this yeah. week. So here's Defenders number one second print, um, which, you know, was the first cameo of Omnimax, so they're talking about him on the cover, that creature that, um, it's it's like Galactus, except the difference with Om Omnimax is Galactus doesn't want to have to eat planets, you know, he, he needs to. Omnimax revels in it. Omnimax is like Galactus, but he loves eating planets. <laughs> so pretty terrible entity when they enjoy it as well. Uh, Galactus's mother's first appearance was also in this issue. So a lot, a lot of things going on. Uh, Al Ewan's behind it, though, so it, ma it makes sense. Omnimax reminds me of, like, he'd be like a Transformer or yeah, something. Yeah, I, I can hear that for sure. <laughs> All right, next up is Miles Morales' Spider-Man number 29, second printing. This is getting a second print because it is the debut of a new costume. There it is, too. Yep. Yeah, they put it on the cover. Really cool. Yep, that that's awesome. They snuck it in. Like, we were all like, when's it going to happen? Yeah. And it happened right at the end of this issue. 
Then we have, this looks really cool in black and white. This is Spirit of Vengeance Spirit Rider. So the, uh, the one shot they just put out with Kushala, the Spirit Rider, because she is not only a kind of a ghost rider, but also a Sorcerer Supreme, I guess, in her... She in the main universe, or is she in a from the past? From, from the, the past, 1800s. okay, yeah. So they are reprinting this because I believe it's her first like full standalone issue. Mm -hmm. She was in other things, but this is her first solo story. Yep. So Barbaric number three, they don't have the cover for this, but they're releasing a deluxe black and white edition. So they're so proud of this and how Barbaric's been doing in the art that what this edition is going to be is it's going to be the art just in black and white so you can see how nice it looks you know without all those all those nasty colors getting in the way <laughs> but on top of that they said that they're um, printing it on premium paper i almost want to get one i just want to see what <laughs> premium paper feels like versus normal in fact i am i'm going to get this it's going to be like i'm going to silk. report back it's, it's going to on this premium over. paper so it. on top of that they're also having one that is going to be in a black bag. They keep doing the black bag comics, um, which people keep coming yeah. in here later. Like, you got any more of those? So what's interesting is they did this for issue one, mm -hmm. and the main cover of the deluxe edition of number one was the same, but the black bag variant was actually a all-new cover. So it wasn't just a black and white version of one of the other. Interesting. So I don't know if they're going to keep that up, but if you're trying to get all covers or, you know, you're like, oh, I got the main cover or whatever. This is going to be probably a different cover. Buy it for the black bag experience. Keep it for the premium paper that it's <laughs> printed on. So once again, when these covers aren't available, us retailers don't order as many. And I don't mean just us, but other shops. So wherever you shop, you may want to ask for this one because I doubt they're going to just order a ton of them sight unseen. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up is <laughs> Treasure Park Boys get an effing comic book, number one, second print. Um, I, I'm very pleased for them that they <laughs> were able to sell out of their number one on a distributor level, get a second printing. I love their show. The show has so many seasons. It's amazing how just these same characters who go through the same struggles and just a, they're so the same every time, but they have new stories to tell constantly. It's just hilarious. So this is original shorts uh, that feel like they're pulled from the TV show, but also just some stuff they do in a comic medium that can't be done on the show as well. So it's original stories. And Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, I'll tell you, Trailer Park Boys has gone so long that if you tell someone to watch the beginning of it, our camera technology has gotten so much better, the show looks kind of crappy on the old cameras because <laughs> yeah. it was shot. I mean, it's been going on for so long. Yeah, yeah and this but, had a free comic book day book. Yes, it did. So. And, of course, Julian's on the cover with his drink. <laughs> Never leaves his hand. And uh, Ricky with his hound's tooth. Yep. And Bubble with the, with the specs. <laughs> All right, so uh, the last one we're going to go over today, this is X-Men Hellfire Gala Trade Paperback. Now, this isn't everything Gala-related. That would be a very thick book. Uh, this is just $18. It collects Marauders 21, X-Men number 21, Planet Size X-Men, which is a triple size book, I think, Sword number 6, and it also says, now this confused me, it says it collects material from classic X-Men number 7. So I brought this up to Andy, and we were laughing about it, because Classic X-Men is a reprint of <laughs> X-Men number 99. Mm -hmm. So are they reprinting a reprint? Yeah. Uh, they're like, we're not going to go all the way back to the first printing. We're not going to tell you that. We're gonna, we're just going to reprint the reprint. Yeah, so you might be getting a photocopy of a photocopy or something <laughs> here. I, I don't know. So just amuse me. In so. Inside comic joke. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you got some useful info in here. And man, like, at least now you know about all the second printings that are coming out. <laughs> really? <laughs> you got to have deja vu going in the store and be like, didn't this already come out? Oh, it's a second print. Yeah. Lots of exciting stuff happening, though. <laughs> all right, well, if you have not yet, please take a second to subscribe to our channel. It would really mean a lot to us. And we will see you next week.